Hey guys, welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 tutorial and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create a dynamic footprint system. So in this we're going to have different materials as you can see here, but this works with any. I've got two, but you can have as many as you want. And when we're on the snow, we'll have a snow footprint and when we're on the grass, we'll have a grass footprint. And again, you can do this with as many as you want. So I'll show you what this is going to look like now. So if we hit play, so you can see as I'm walking on this concrete here, we don't have any footprints. You can add some on this if you want, but I haven't. If we go onto the snow, we have these snowy footprints here, as you can see. If I go onto the grass, we then have grass footprints. Now you might not like the look of these too much as it's just a solid green colour and a solid white colour, but you can change that to be whatever you like. You can change it to have an actual texture if you want. I just did solid colours just to test it out like this, and just to give you the basic fundamental codings of it, but again, you can change the looks to be however you like. And also you can see at the very end, they are disappearing, so after a set amount of time they will also despawn, meaning it won't lag out the game at all, and it will be very efficient for our computer and for the game. So I mentioned efficiency there. So I did spend quite a bit of time this morning trying to figure out the best way of doing this. I tried a lot of different ways and I think I found the most efficient way that I've found anyway. Um, so I tried a lot of different things. So I tried to do a dynamic material. So it would then just change the texture parameter depending on which surface we're on. But if we did that, if we were on snow, go to grass, this snow would then also change to grass as the texture parameter has changed to be the grass one, which you'd then think set a material. So it would then create a material for ones which are already placed down so they don't change. But that would then mean if we go to snow and go to grass, this would say a snow. If we went back to grass, this would then also be snow, or it would then change that material to be grass, meaning these ones would be grass as well. So that might not make a lot of sense because it is quite confusing. But then to fix that, you'd say to just create a new material for each one. So it then sets a new material for the ones that are placed down, depending on which surface they're on. So you can do that, but I've basically done it kind of like that, but more efficient. So we're going to have a different material for each surface. So like I say, I've tried a lot of different ways. This is the one which I found to be the most efficient and the kind of easiest to do and understand as well. So if you have any other ways that you'd think about doing this, let me know down below and I'll have a look into them to see if they're any better. But like I say, I think this one's quite good. But let's get right into it. So I'll delete what I've got now and then show you how I did this. So what our first step wants to be is we want to import our footprint textures. So I'm going to do this in my footprint system folder and then here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drag and drop in my footprint textures here. So just drag and drop them in there and we have them like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open them up and I'll leave a link to these in the description down below. Now what you can do is you can either have two basic ones like this, so I've just got a left and a right which I've just flipped and these are technically snow ones, but you can have snow ones, grass ones, mud ones, anything like that and these will just then be actual textures or you can do what I'm doing and just have one main one and change the colour of it. It doesn't matter too much and I'll show you how to do it with textures later on as well. You just follow the exact same steps I'm going to take and then I'll show you how to do that when it comes to it. So once you've opened them up, what we're going to do is we want to get rid of this background. So that's why I've made it a black background. So what I can do is I can just tick chroma key texture there, select the color, hit the eyedrop tool, hit the black, press OK, and now we've got rid of the background color there. Save, close that, and do it with your other footprint as well. So as you can see, I've got a left and a right. You're going to want to do the same thing as well, or just have one if the foot has no specific shape, but it most commonly will. So again, chroma key texture, hit the color, eyedrop tool, hit your background color, press OK, and we've got rid of it like so. Save and close that. Then we want to make our materials. So I'll put these in the mats here actually, so move them into there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna control click on these to select them both, right click, and we're gonna create a material like so. And then what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna rename these. So this is footprint LG mat for footprint left grass. And then I'll rename the other one to footprint RG for footprint right grass. These are obviously going to be grass footprints. So I'm going to open those up straight away, like so. In here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this texture sample out a bit, and then also down and disconnect the RGB color there by holding Alt left click. I'm just going to deselect this, and over on the right down here, I'm going to change the material domain to be deferred decal, blend mode to be translucent. This means we can use it in a decal, which is how we're going to be doing these footprints. The A value of this, so the alpha, is going to go into the opacity of our return value there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hold down three left click to get a constant three vector, which is a color. If you want to do this with actual textures, what you do here is hold down T left click, get a texture sample, put your texture in there, and then plug the RGB into the base color like so. But I'm doing it with just solid colors. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna connect the result of this into the base color like so, and change this constant three vector color to be a nice green like this. So I think that will be good for me hit OK, and we can hit Apply. 
and that's all we need to do in here. So all we've done is we've just made this material to either have a texture of our grass footprint or we want it to have the color of our grass instead. And the reason we're doing this texture sample here in the opacity is this is going to give us the shape of the footprint, this is going to give us the color or texture of the footprint. So you're going to do that, apply, save and close that. And then we'll do it in the other material as well. This is still grass, it's just this was the, my left footprint, the other one is my right footprint. Then like I say, we're going to do the same in here, so move the texture sample out and down. The A will go into the opacity, disconnect the RGB like that, and then we can just material domain, defer decal, blend mode, translucent. Hold down 3 or T, left click to either get this constant 3 vector or your texture sample, plugging it in to the base color, and actually what I'll do is I'll just duplicate this one over so I can have the exact same color. But if you're just using textures, then obviously it'll be a lot easier for you. So base color like so, hit apply and save like that. Now we've done this for the grass, but what we want to do is we want to create these for every single material that we are going to have. So in this example that I'm making, I'm going to be having a grass and I'm going to be having a snow, but you can have grass, snow, mud, concrete, anything like that. So the concrete might just be like wet surface or something, but you can do whatever you like. So like I say, I'm only going to have two, which is snow and grass, but you can have as many as you want. Just do this in every single one that you have. So what we want to do to make more is you want to select them both, right click, want to hit duplicate like so. Then we'll rename these to be appropriate. This will instead be L S for left snow. And then this one will be R S for right snow. And then let's open those up and change the color to be white instead of green or change your texture to be snow instead of grass. So I'll have it like that, have a bit of a gray so it stands out a bit more like so. I'll duplicate that over and then save and apply this material as well. So again, you're going to want to do this for every single material you have. So just create a new material for each footprint of each different surface you want it to be on, i.e. grass, mud, snow, sand, anything like that. So we can close those like so. So now you've created all the materials you want. What we want to do is we want to actually create these footprint decals. So I'm just going to go back to my main footprint system folder. I'm going to right click I'm going to create a blueprint class. This one is going to be an actor. I'm going to call this one footprint underscore R. You can name this whatever you like, but for me, this is my right footprint. So that makes the most sense for me. I'm going to open that up straight away before creating our left one. In here, we want to add a component. We want to add a decal, like so. We want to change its rotation on the X to be 90, and then it's on the Y to be minus 90. Now, you don't need to do the X one as well, but that's just for my specific texture. Mess about the rotation, it's perfect for you. But the Y you want to make sure is minus 90 so that it is facing the floor and it's facing down so it works properly. Otherwise, you won't get it working. So make sure on the Y it's rotated by minus 90. And then also on the Y, I'm going to scale it down to 0.75. Now, you don't need to do that as well. Again, that's specific for my texture as otherwise it would be a square and I don't want my texture to be a square. But again, get it perfect for you and how you want it to look. And the decal material, I'm just going to set this to be a base material of my footprint RG, so right grass. It doesn't matter as this is going to be changed later on. This is just as a reference as we need a material in there. Then you can change the fade start delay. I'm going to set that to 5, but this is how long it will be there for before it starts to fade out. So, for example, I want my footprints to be on screen for 5 seconds, then they disappear. You can set this to be a lot longer if you want, so 30 seconds, a minute, anything like that. But just keep in mind that the longer they are on screen, the more laggy it can get. Now, it will only really lag out if you have a lot. So obviously, if you've got a minute's worth of footprints, that will be a lot more than five seconds worth of footprints. So just get that to be how you want it to be. The fade duration is obviously how long it will take to fade out. So I'll also set that to five seconds as well. So five seconds after they've spawned in, they'll take five seconds to despawn. Then we just want to make sure that we have destroy owner after fade ticked, meaning they will actually disappear and not just be invisible. This is again helping with performance and efficiency. Then we compile and save that. Then what else we want to do in here is we want to create our different materials. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit the plus variable here and I'm going to call this one grass mat like so and I'll change the variable type to be a material object reference there. Hit compile that and we can change this default value so again make sure you compiled it to change it. I'm going to set this one to be footprint rg mat so my right footprint for the grass. Compile and save that. I'm going to hit plus variable again. I'm going to create my snow mat. So again, do this for as many materials as you made. Compile that, change this to footprint rs for my right snow. So that's all I need to do as I've only created grass and snow. But if you made grass, snow, mud, sand, anything like that, do this for all of them. 
this is how we're going to set which one it needs to be. So you compile, save and close that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to right click on that and we're going to duplicate it and change this one to be footprint L. Now we have our right footprint and our left footprint and then we're going to open up our left footprint. All we need to do in here is just change these materials around so that instead of being right they are left. So footprint LG for my left grass and then footprint LS for left snow. And I'll also change the default value of this decal as well to be LG. Compile, save, we can close that. Now we have those set up. Now we've got them set up, what we need to do is we want to be able to spawn them. So what we're going to do first is we're going to find out where we want to spawn them. So to do that, we're going to open up our character blueprint. So for me, that's content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character. But for you, this could be third, first, or whatever you've named it. Once we're in here, we can go straight up to the viewport. What we're going to do is we're going to add a component and we're going to get a plane. And I'm going to name this one foot L for left foot. Drag and drop that onto the mesh there. So it's parented to the mesh, so it moves with the mesh. And the parent socket, I'll change to also be foot L to the left foot. Compile that, and I'll just rotate and move this to be perfectly aligned with the right foot as well. So I'm just gonna to toggle off the snapping so I can get more precise movements, and then just move this to be where I think it should be. So I think that will be a good height. That's around the center, and I'll just scale this down. The scaling doesn't really matter as we're only using this for location reference, but it just looks a little bit nicer. So again, make sure this is placed directly in the center of the foot where you'd want it to be. Again, this is where the decal is going to spawn. So make sure it's just a little bit above the foot like so, so it's not going to go under the floor. So now that's a good reference for where the left foot is going to spawn. So what to do, you want to control C, control V that to duplicate it and get foot R. So rename it foot R drag and drop that back onto the mesh. Parent socket this time will obviously be foot R, so the right foot, and then just move this to where we want it to be. So let me put snap back on, foot R, like so. So this is gonna determine where the footprint should be spawning. So we want it to be directly under the player's feet, not just where the player is in general, specifically the feet. So we compile and save that. What we also want to do is we want to make sure that we select both of these and then over on the right, we're going to scroll down till we find collision. Generate overlap events, we're going to untick. Can character step up on, we're going to set that to be no. Collision presets, we'll put as no collision. And then also further down, we'll untick cast shadow and tick hidden in game. So what this means is that the player won't be able to see them and there won't be collision on them at all. So as far as the player is aware, these don't exist. It's purely for us developers to see and mess about with to use as a reference for where we want the foot to spawn the footprint to spawn, sorry. So we compile, save that, and that should be that all done. So what we want to do now is we set up where we want to spawn it. Now we want to set up when we want to spawn it. So what we can do is we can minimize this as we'll come back here later on. And we're gonna to go to our animations. So for me, that's content, mannequin, animations. I'm gonna do this in the third person run, but you wanna do this in every single animation you have, which you want to spawn footprints in. So this could be the running, the walking, the idle, and the landing on the jump. So open up all of those. It's the exact same process in each one, but I'm gonna show you how to do it in just one of these, as that's all I need to do for this tester. So once you're in here, I'm gonna pause the animation, and we're just gonna to get to a side-on view like so, so we can see it perfectly like this. Let's go all the way back to the beginning. What we want to do is we want to move this timeline along until the foot hits the floor. So I think there, the foot is now landing on the floor, maybe a little bit further back like that maybe. And I'm gonna right click on here, and I'm going to add notify, new notify and I'm going to call this one footprint R so where the right foot has landed and move that to be on the timeline like so. I move this along again till we get to where the other foot lands so I say about there is good. Right click, add notify, new notify, footprint L. This is the left foot now. Again move that to where it wants to be and I think that is all the ones I need in here like so. So as you can see if we move this timeline along the player is running their foot lands there, so that's where we want to spawn the footprint. We're running again, the foot lands about there. So I'll move that over a little bit, and now that's where we want the other footprint to spawn. So we set up where, and now we've also set up when. So now if you're setting this up in multiple animations, what you can do is you can right click, add notify, skeleton notifies, and now you have these footprint notifies here. You don't need to create more, you can just access these ones again. And so that will work perfectly. Again, just find where you want it to spawn. So there, that's when the foot's landed and that will work perfectly like so. Once you've done that, that'll be great. So you can just save 
and close that again doing it for all the animations that you want. So I think that'll be it for this video on part one of creating this dynamic footprint system. In today's video we've created the materials, created the decals and we've also made when and where we need to spawn these footprints and then tomorrow I'll upload the second part of defining these surfaces so you see here we have grass and snow we're going to be defining each one so that the system knows which is which and then we'll actually be spawning these footprints spawning the correct type so if we have grass or snow and then that'll be it done so it's going to be two parts i recorded it all in one and edited it all and it's come out to just over half an hour it's about 31 minutes so i decided that might be a bit too long for one video so i'll cut it in half do this outro here and just split it so it's about 15 minutes each roughly about that so Again, I think I'll make this video and tomorrow the second part's coming out on doing what I've just said. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.